you can support In the Past Lane by buying some of our merchandise, like shirts, hoodies, mugs, and stickers. Just go to our website, inthepastlane.com. Thanks. Whoa, hit the brakes. You've arrived at the number one drive-by for American history. Welcome to The Pit Stop. Brought to you by In the Past Lane, the podcast about history and why it matters. Here's Edward T. O'Donnell, your host and historian at large. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Pit Stop, your source for history on the go in just about five minutes. If you're new to the podcast, we offer this feature every Monday, in addition to our full feature episodes, in which I interview historians about their latest books. Here's what happened in American history the week of January 14th, 2019. Let's start with birthdays. January 14th, 1741, is the birthday of Benedict Arnold, who was born in Norwich, Connecticut. Arnold was one of the most successful military leaders in the early years of the American Revolution. Most historians consider the American victory over the British in the Battle of Saratoga in 1777 to be a key turning point in the American Revolution. And the key figure in that victory was Benedict Arnold. But over time, Arnold began to feel that he wasn't receiving the credit and honor he was due, and so, as everyone knows, he defected to the British and went on to be remembered as the greatest traitor in American history. January 15, 1811, that's the birthday of abolitionist and women's rights advocate Abby Kelly Foster, who was born in Pelham, Massachusetts. Foster was known for her fearlessness and fiery rhetoric. She once said, I prefer not to argue about a woman's rights, but to take them. January 15, 1929 is the birthday of Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., who was born in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin Luther King needs no introduction. He was not a one-man civil rights movement, but he was the key charismatic leader of a civil rights movement of thousands of brave activists. In recent decades, his popular image, especially every January around his birthday, has become that of a harmless, meek, non-threatening advocate of peace and racial harmony. But the truth is, Martin Luther King was a true blue radical in the American tradition. He challenged white America, and they hated him for it. And that's why he was eventually murdered. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, Freedom is never given voluntarily by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. January 17th, 1706, is the birthday of Benjamin Franklin, who was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Benjamin Franklin was a little bit of everything. He was a printer and an entrepreneur. He was a writer, perhaps most famously of Poor Richard's Almanac. Franklin was also an inventor and a diplomat. He once wrote, God grant that not only the love of liberty, but a thorough knowledge of the rights of man may pervade all the nations of the earth so that a philosopher may set his foot anywhere on its surface and say, this is my country. January 19th, 1807 is the birthday of General Robert E. Lee, who was born in Stratford Hall, Virginia. At the outset of the Civil War, Robert E. Lee was offered the top military position in the Union Army. Instead, Lee turned his back on his country in its greatest hour of need to join the Confederacy. Let's turn to events. January 14th, 1990 marked the debut of the animated TV show, The Simpsons. And ever thereafter, America has enjoyed the dopey escapades of Homer Simpson and his family. Now, how to choose a quote by Homer Simpson? There are just so many to choose from. But here goes. Homer Simpson once said, Every time I learn something new, it pushes some old stuff out of my brain. And beer, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. January 15th, 1919, 100 years ago this week, a huge storage tank in Boston's North End containing thousands of gallons of sticky, gooey molasses exploded. The explosion sent a huge wave of molasses traveling 35 miles an hour into the neighboring streets, inundating unsuspecting men, women, and children. In all, the Great Molasses Flood of 1919 killed 21 people, many of them Italian immigrants. January 16, 1786, the state of Virginia adopted the Statute for Religious Freedom. Written by Thomas Jefferson, the statute basically said the state could not discriminate against a person on account of their religious beliefs. The law became a blueprint of sorts for the First Amendment to the Constitution, which was ratified a few years later. January 16, 1919, also 100 years ago this week, the 18th Amendment was declared ratified. This amendment outlawed the sale, manufacture, and transportation of alcoholic beverages. It took effect one year later in January 1920, beginning a very sad 13-year period in American history known as Prohibition. Okay, time for the last word. Let's give it to Thomas Jefferson and the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, which was adopted 233 years ago this week. Here's the key paragraph. Be it enacted by the General Assembly, 
that no man shall be compelled to frequent or support any religious worship, place, or ministry whatsoever, nor shall be enforced, restrained, molested, or burdened in his body or goods, nor shall otherwise suffer on account of his religious opinions or belief, but that all men shall be free to profess, and by argument to maintain, their opinion in matters of religion, and that the same shall in no wise diminish, enlarge, or affect their civil capacities. Okay, people, that's your history fix for the week. Now put it in drive and go make your own history.